the North American prairies have tons of animals, but for time's sake, I can only tell you about four of them. The four are the prairie dog, the coyote, the bison, and the bald eagle. The prairie dog has short arms and legs. They have light brown fur with lighter underbellies. They have short, flat tails with a black tip at the end. They have large eyes and small ears. The prairie dog is typically found in the United States, Mexico, and Canada. They live in boroughs called towns, and in these towns live individual families called coteries. One coterie is comprised of one male and one to four females and all their young. The prairie dog prefers living in short grasslands because they can see farther out to detect predators. After they build a burrow, they will chew the weeds down for better sight. The prairie dog weighs about one to three and a half pounds and are 12 to 16 inches long. They typically mature at about two years and have one to six offspring in each litter. Males live about five years, while females live about eight years. The prairie dog eats mostly plants and herbs, but will also eat grasshoppers and other small insects. Prairie dogs are very social as they interact with other prairie dogs within the same family. Prairie dogs show their affection by kissing and grooming each other. The prairie dog has developed a behavioral anti-predator bark. The Linnaeus classification for a prairie dog is as follows. The next animal is the coyote. Coyote is gray with light yellow or white legs and a bushy tail. It grows to be about 2 feet tall and weighs 20 to 40 pounds. They have great vision and a keen sense of smell. A coyote's diet consists of mostly rodents, insects, and fruit. Coyotes will attack livestock when food is scarce. The average lifespan of a coyote is 10 to 14 years. Here's the Linnaeus classification for a coyote. The next animal is the bison. The bison is a large animal that is about 6 feet tall and 10 feet long. It weighs anywhere from 1,600 to 2,500 pounds. It has brown scraggly fur and curved horns and lives about 10 to 25 years. Although the bison have poor vision, they have a very good sense of smell. The bison is found in the Great Plains of the United States. They live in large herds where one male leads the pack, but if the herd feels threatened, they will stampede. The bison eats mostly grass, but can also eat shoots from other plants. Here's the Linnaeus classification for a bison. The final animal is the bald eagle. The bald eagle is a type of sea eagle that lives near lakes or rivers. They feed on fish, small animals, and other small birds. The bald eagle has phenomenal vision, as it can see a small animal from up to three miles away. The bald eagle has a white head with a brown body, a white tail, and a yellow curved beak. The bald eagle has a wingspan of anywhere from 78 to 96 inches, and they are 30 to 43 inches tall. The female lays two or three eggs a year. The average life expectancy for a bald eagle is 15 to 20 years. As you can see, this is the Linnaeus classification for a bald eagle. Blue gramma grass belongs to the genus Betulia and the species Gracilis. This grass can be used for erosion control, browsing, or as a decorative plant. Blue gramma grass is is a warm season, tufted perennial peri grass. It is native to short and tall grass prairies and makes up to 75 to 90 percent of the grasses found there. These prairies lie in Central North America. Blue grammar grass can grow up to 18 inches tall. It grows as a bunch of grass forming open sod mats. As it matures and it, and it is grazed on by animals, the bunches grow together and form a thick sod. Blue grammar is an important prairie grass because it is dense. The shallow roots mass hold down the soil and keep it from blowing away like it did during the Dust Bowl era in the 1930s. Blue grama is 6 to 12 inches high. It has flat leaves that come to a point at the end. The leaves can grow from 1 to 10 inches long and 1 eighth inch wide. Buffalo grass belongs to the genus Bicholi and the species Decheloid. The parts of this grass that are used are used for turf and feed purposes. Buffalo grass is a very hardy grass and it grows mostly in the North American prairies. Buffalo grass is a warm season native perennial short grass. It grows between 2 to 5 inches tall and spreads out between 6 feet and 12 feet wide. It has a round hollow stem with a gray green curly leaves. The leaves are one tenth of an inch wide and two inches long. Buffalo grass has both male and female plants. 
The flower stalks are 4 to 8 inches tall, and the female seed head of buffalo grass grows in clusters of 3 to 5 hairy spikelets. The tiny clusters of yellow to golden male flower of buffalo grass grow about 2 inches above the blades. Buffalo grass is one of the most important grasses in the short grass prairie. Both livestock and white-tailed deer, buffalo, pork, horns, jackrabbits, and prairie dogs use it as forage. Flea vein flower, also commonly known as the Philadelphia daisy or Philadelphia flea vein, belongs to the genus Eragon and the species Philadelphus. The parts used of this flower are the whole plant and also the insides which are extracted. Fleabane is a part of the aster family and blooms from April through June. Fleabane looks like a daisy with about a hundred ray-like petals that can be white or pinkish. The centers are yellow and the flowers grow in clusters with several, several clusters per plant. They can grow to be 4 to 30 inches high. They have hairy alternate leaves that can be oval or lance shaped with a pointed tip. They can grow up to 6 inches long and 2 inches wide. When you burn fleabane, it produces an oily smoke that repels insects like fleas. Tannis and fleabane protect, protects cut from infections and promotes skin tissue healing. Also, the weed was used to soothe sore throat. The purple comb flower belongs to the genus Enhancia and the species Purpura. The parts used of this flower are the stems and the roots. The purple cone flower has a reddish center and purple, red, or white petals that hang down. It can grow to be two to feet, two to three feet tall. The center can grow to be the size of a child's fist, and the petals are about as long as the diameter of the center. It is part of the daisy and dandelion family. Scientists have discovered some antibacterial properties in its extracts. It gets the immune system of the body going by active activating microphages, which are involved in destroying bacteria. It also provides relief from insect bites and stings. The flowers also can cure acne, boils, and toothaches. Milkweed, commonly known as the blood flower or tropical milkweed, belongs to the genus Escapes and the species Curvasus. The parts used of this flower are its roots and the stem. This herb produces a red and yellow blossom in the spring, which are less than and into cross. The outside petals, or corolla, are red and curved down. The five inside petals are hooded and yellow or orange. The milkweed has, white po has a white poisonous sap from which it gets its name. It can grow to be two to three and a half feet. It attracts bees, butterflies, and hummingbirds. Monarch butterflies particularly like it just because of the butterfly weed, which is in the same family. The Omaha Indians use milkweed root as a slave for wounds. Navajo women made tea from it to prevent pregnancy, but scientists do not believe that it helped. However, the weed's roots do possess properties that heal wounds. There are three types of prairies in North America. They are the tall grass prairie, the mixed prairie, and short grass prairie. The tall grass prairie receives the most rainfall and its grasses can be over five feet tall. In the west, the amount of annual precipitation decreases. The tall grass prairie moves into mixed prairie. The mixed prairie has grasses between two and four feet. In the Rocky Mountains, the short grass prairie, also known as the plains, support grasses that are less than two feet tall. The prairies are also known as the Great Plains, and they are spread across over 800 miles from mountains to the Mississippi River. The prairies are located in the following states. The tall grass prairie mostly consists of the states Iowa, Illinois, Missouri, parts of Ohio, Indiana, Minnesota, and parts of North South Dakota, Nebraska, Oklahoma, and Kansas. The mixed prairie consists of North and South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, and parts of Texas and Oklahoma. The short grass prairie consists of Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, Arizona, Texas, and New Mexico. The grassland soil is rich with nutrients. All three of the prairies share these following characteristics. They exist on flat or rolling terrain with soils that are rich in organic matter they are slightly alkaline and are fertile. 
pre precipitation averaging between 10 and 39 inches annually is concentrated in peak periods having times of some drought. Wind is an important factor in the climate. Water evaporates, contributing to the arid conditions, and wind also contributes to the spread of wildfires. Fire is important in the grassland ecosystem. Most trees are killed by fire, but grasses have adapted to make them grow better after they've been burned. Climate in these American prairies are, is very important. As you move from east to west, the rainfall in the prairies decreases. Climates are more moist close to the mountains and to the east and north. They are the driest in the central portions. This creates different types of prairies. The tall grass prairie, known as the true prairie, is wetter. Grasses such as big blue stem, Indian grass, and many species of flowers grow here. The plants can grow to be 10 feet tall. Mixed grass prairies are found in the central Great Plains, and short grass prairie towards the rain shadow of the Rocky Mountains. The rain shadow causes Pacific Ocean moisture to rise and cool, dropping as rain or snow on the western side of the mountains instead of on the prairies. The precipitation in the prairies can reach from about 12.6 inches in the short grass prairie to 21.7 inches in the tall grass prairie. In the climatograph pictured, the most precipitation is in the months of June and July, and the lowest precipitation is in the months of February and December, where it can reach below 1.1 inches and reach as high as 4.4 inches. The temperatures also follow the same pattern. They go from around five degrees Fahrenheit in January and December to the hottest months, which are June and July, where it can reach up to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. The following pictures are the trophic levels for the animals and plants and the food web for the ecosystem. There are numerous existing efforts in terms of fixing grassland bird extinction. The Rocky Mountain Bird Observatory has annually held a region-wide pilot survey to inventory, research, and monitor wintering birds in grassland priority conservation areas, which began in 2007. The survey included 682 one-kilometer line transects at randomly selected grassland sites across 10 PCAs, which generated data on 31 grassland-associated species of high regional or continental conservation interest. The annual survey must be continued and moder monitoring must be expanded to more fully evaluate patterns of species abundance and identify additional areas of important wintering habitat for priority species. Numerous agencies and organizations can be contacted if one would like to learn more about grassland bird conservation issues. These include the Rocky Mountain Bird Observatory, the Commission for Envi Environmental Cooperation, also known as the CEC, the North American Environmental Atlas, and the North American Bird Conservation Initiative, also known as the NABCI. Another crucial environmental issue faced by the North American grasslands is the threatened species of prairie bush clover. Prairie bush clover is one of the most crucial types of vegetation in the Nechusa Prairie of Illinois. However, the bush clover is federally threatened. Tons of uncommon and rare animals live in the Nechusa Prairie, including Blanding's turtles, grasshopper sparrows, dick sissels, and henlow sparrows. Nechusa is home to 700 native plant species and 180 species of birds. A preserve has been created there in order to conserve the bush clover and the indigenous species that rely on it. If the preserve continues to expand, bison may, able, may be able to inhabit the land again. There are many different existing efforts in order to preserve the Nechusa prairie. There has been a preserve created within the prairie to protect the vegetation and animal life of the area. The Conservancy has added 350 acres to Nechusa by acquiring the Orland Tract. According to the Nature Conservancy, nearly 90% of this remarkable property is comprised of remnant prairie and oak savanna habitat, having never been touched by the plow. If one wishes to learn more about the conservation of the Nechusa Prairie, they can contact the Nature Conservancy.